Hello everybody, how are you today? Let me know how I sound, I'll be beginning in just a second. I'm wondering if I should kick out this sleeping kitty, but it's so cute sleepy, so maybe I won't. Okay, I'm okay. But if he starts bugging us, I'm gonna have to kick him out. Or else he's gonna turn off the live stream again like he did last time. Well, not last time, but you know, the time before. Anyhow, let me know how I sound, I'll be on in just a moment. Just winding up the yarn um but i just wanted to also say uh hey if you can get this video to 500 likes we'll do a giveaway next live stream so i just uh, wanted you know wanted to mention that um and also if you want to find the pattern for this it should be linked in the description below but you know the deal i'll give you all that information uh once we get going okay give me just a couple more minutes i gotta wind one more ball of yarn Alrighty, let's get rocking and rolling. Hey everybody, welcome to the live stream. Today we're gonna be crocheting a black-footed ferret. You saw it in the screen before this. I don't, I don't got one here to show you. Well, actually, I do, but I don't know where it is. Oh well, we're gonna make another one anyhow. We're also gonna do some fun little. Uh, I don't know. I've got a couple ideas of how we can customize this one at the end of it. Um, but I want to make it mostly the same pattern. Um, okay, so first off, let's talk about what you need for this tutorial or for this pattern. If you want to crochet along with me, you absolutely do not have to crochet this along with me. You can make whatever you want. But if you want to make this along with me, here's what you need. We're going to be using all worsted weight yarn, 100% cotton. I'm using the colors beige, off-white, and black. Um, you'll need uh, these three colors or you can probably do the whole pattern with just one color too If you want to make just like a single colored black footed ferret that could be kind of cute actually um, uh, Or just like a regular ferret. I guess it wouldn't be a black footed ferret then I'm gonna be using a size G Oop. Let's see how let's see how this autofocus thing works. There we go G four millimeter crochet hook 
you'll need a pair of scissors, a darning needle, some safety eyes. I've got a bottle of eyes like this in the store. Um, I'm actually running low on these, so I gotta uh, re refill this bottle soon. Um, but yeah, these are all the materials that you're gonna need if you wanna get the pattern for today's, or yeah, the pattern for today's pattern. <laughs> if you wanna get the tutorial for today, um, it's gonna be right here, clubcrochet.com slash ferret. This is not my original pattern. I do have to say that. This pattern is from at Lemon Yarn Creations. She's another amigurumi artist uh, that made a an amigurumi piece for our Earth Day collaboration. So this is part of a huge collaboration project that me and four other amigurumi artists um, are doing to raise money for the World Wildlife Fund. Uh, it's a nonprofit that's mission is to conserve nature and reduce the most pressing threats to diversity of life on our planet. So we're trying to raise money for the World Wildlife Fund today. Each designer made a different pattern. Um, last week we made the dugong pattern and we actually made, where is, here, here's Hugh. We actually altered it to make it um, a manatee by changing the tail. You can see how the tail is a little bit different there. And uh, we made Hugh manatee. <laughs> So today we're going to be making our ferret. Um, these patterns are all donate to download. If you donate using the link in the description below or by going to clubcrochet.com slash earth day, you can get all the patterns in the collection, each of which include a full video tutorial um, and an interactive PDF with check marks to keep track of progress, time codes to go along with the video tutorial, blah, blah, blah. 100% of, of the proceeds from digital downloads is donated to the World Wildlife Fund. Uh, indefinitely so you can see you can get uh, ugh, you can do ugh. hold on <sighs> so even if you're seeing this like years later you can still donate to download and support the cause um, <laughs> hey guys how's everybody go how's everybody doing in the chat I see you over there hello Jolly Joel hello Kelly I saw Cooper there earlier Tina already made a donation too. Um, by the way, if you'd like to donate directly to the cause, uh, the you should see in this video. Oh, you know what? I actually might have goofed this up. Hold on. Can I change this right now? One second, one second. I just realized I didn't make this, I didn't add the fundraiser to this. Hold on, I need to change this so that it's got the fundraiser. Tina already made a donation too. Oop. And we got edit video. Can I do it while the live stream is happening? That is the question. I think I can. Add a fundraiser. There we go. This one. Continue. All right. Okay. I think I fixed it. I did. Man, look at that. I'm so... Psh. I'm a, I'm a talent. I'm a gem. My mama loves me. All right, so now this video is part of a <laughs> fundraiser. If you would like to donate to the fundraiser, there should be little two little hands like clasp, clasping like this that make a heart in the corner of the video. Um, and if you donate there, it will go directly to the World Wildlife Fund as part of this donation uh, thingamabob, and you'll get the pattern. So you can get the pattern that way as well, um, the PDF version, I mean. If you want to find uh, just the video tutorial and written pattern, you can find it in the... Um, we got to turn off the autofocus also. There we go. You can find it at clubcrochet.com slash ferret. Uh, but yes, and oh yeah, if you donate, I'll put a little crocheted thing out for you. And we actually already got a donation. We got two. First off, we got Tina. Tina, Tina, Fobina, Fofifi, Fofina. We're gonna put out for Tina, Ellie the elephant. Because you know what? This thing is adorable and it deserves our love. So we're gonna put that right there for Tina to say thank you for the donations. Um, also, I'm gonna be trying to keep track of the donations on the, um, for orders. I have a more difficult time keeping track of those, but uh, I will keep track of those and I'll put those out as well. But we also got a big one from Cooper. Thank you so much, Cooper, for donating um, to the World Wildlife Fund. We're gonna put out, this is perfect, this is perfect. Um, this is a pattern by one of our uh, good friends here, Sir Pearl Gray, for 
Angie the anglerfish. Look at this cute little anglerfish. Oh, it's a, it, as adorable as it can be while still being a vicious beast. <laughs> this is a pattern from a while ago, but if you'd like to check it out, there there is links for that as well. Um, Sir Pearl Gray made this pattern, uh, also made a pattern in this library for the pangolin. So he is the designer for this one. So yes. Okay. <sighs> All right, let's get rocking and rolling. We're gonna start, I'm gonna start by crocheting the front legs here. And I do have an idea on how to uh, customize this a little bit. Not like crazy customization, but I got, I got an idea and I'll share it with you a little later. Does it look dark to you? Or is that just me? Let's turn up my brightness. Eh, it's not bad. It's not that bad. Okay. Um, yeah. <laughs> Kelly says, don't you hate it when you accidentally crochet your hair into a project and don't notice it until later? Now, luckily, I don't have super duper long hair, so that doesn't become that big of a problem. But I do crochet my cat's hair into my, or fur, I guess, into my projects like all the time. So I totally feel that. Uh, in fact, I think that like probably 90% of my projects have a Jimbo hair in it. I like, I'm looking at this crow right here. It's got a bunch of, look at that. There's Jimbo fur all over it. There's Jimbo fur all over it. And they're just like in the stitches and it's a problem. You know, we got, we got a problem, a Jimbo fur problem. I normally don't care, but when it's white yarn or black yarn, then on black yarn, then it annoys the heck out of me. Yeah, I feel it. I feel it. Two, three, four, five, six. So we're just crocheting the front legs now, by the way, if you're crocheting along with me. By the way, are you crocheting along with me? What are you guys making today? You guys making another ferret also, or are you making something completely different? What what you guys making? What you guys, what you making? I have been crocheting a, a pretty good amount this week. I have been making a lot of, um, a lot of goblinoids. I'm getting back into the stitched world again. I've been writing a, uh, a campaign for a game to play with some friends of mine this Friday. So I'm, I've been trying to prepare it a bunch. Uh-oh, the PDF for the pattern brings you to the dugong. That's what Lunar says. Okay, so Lunar, where where are you talking about here? You're talking about on the Let me let me let me look into this real quick. I can probably fix this pretty quick. If 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 it's where I think it is. So is it if you go to ferret, if you go to clubcrochet.com slash ferret and go to download, is it there that it has the problem? Explain more so I can fix it. Mr. Luna, Lunar, Lunar 6, not Lunar 5. Melanie's crocheting a giant dinosaur. Hold on, I'm clicking down a little bit. Oh, you are correct. Okay, I see it. I see the issue. Hold on. I can fix this. While it's loading, I'm gonna hit. I'm gonna keep crocheting, cause we got, we got some legs to make. But hold on, I will fix it. I found the goof. It's a quick, it's a quick fix if I can get, if it can load fast enough. The problem is we gotta make this. We gotta do this like while this live stream's going, and hopefully it doesn't mess with the stream. You know, internet stuff. Can you hear the pigeon outside the window? Can you hear that? Oh, it was literally right there. Dang, I should have just moved the, <laughs> I should have just moved that and shown you. That was cool. All right, let me fix this PDF thing. I know I had to fix it. If this thing would load. I know how to fix this. The crochet sloth is crocheting a sweater for their mom's birthday. Oh, by the way, isn't Mother's Day coming up like really, really soon? 
My mom mentioned Mother's Day the other day, and I was like, oh, crap, did I mix? Did I miss Mother's Day? But I don't think I did. Okay, I fixed it. Try it again, Mr. Lunar. Let me know if it works. Yes, okay, it should work. It should work. Let me know if it works. And, uh, yeah. And a yeah. And a yeah. Jasmine, how you doing? Jasmine's making a Clefairy. That's dope. I love Clefairy. I always thought that Clefable, the, the evolved form of Clefairy, was like an alternate version of like Gengar. Because doesn't it kind of look like Gengar? I always thought it kind of looked like Gengar to me. Um, okay, one more. There we go. Round five is really weird for these front legs. Like, not in a bad way. But Lemon Yarn Creations did this thing where she does uh, increases on one side and then decreases on the other for the legs. And it makes them, like, go into an interesting shape. I like it, though. In fact, this pattern's really unique because she does, like, this... Um, this whole pattern is no sew. There's no sewing that needs to be done for it. Um, you can like embroider on, you have to embroider on a nose, but like you don't have to actually sew on any pieces, even though it looks like there's, you know, the arms and legs and the tail are all sewn on, but it's actually not. It's all made in one piece and you just kind of like crochet around a piece. It's super unique. I have to say this one is a, uh, this pattern has opened my eyes to a new way to crochet, and I think that is really cool, especially when you've been crocheting as long as I have, to find new, like, techniques. That's my favorite thing about doing these collaborations, is I always learn something new about crochet from doing them, because I get to crochet some projects from other, um, other designers. And every designer has their own little, like, tools that they like to use for their designs. It's really fun. Especially the pangolin. The pangolin pattern is wild. That is a wild pattern. All right, we're changing colors now to our jute yarn. Yeah, no sew patterns are definitely my favorite. Yeah, when it first came to me, the pattern was a little wonky. So I'll give you a little bit of insight into our process at Club Crochet. And by our, I mean mine, because I'm the one that did all these, did all the um, production for the patterns. But uh, all the pattern designers send me over a rough draft of the pattern. That's all they send. Um, and then I go through the process of crocheting it, editing it, making sure it all works right, and then doing uh, and like rewriting it so that it is in the style of club crochet patterns. And then I do a video tutorial for it. And when this pattern first came to me, it was almost perfect. Almost, except for the legs didn't line up, so I had to do some alterations there I kind of think it has to do with how um, it, it I mean it could just be like it could have just been like a little correction but I also think it might have been the way that lemon yarn creations uh, crochets she might like crochet a little tighter so I don't know I don't know uh, Kelly notices this song in every live stream that's funny yeah, I need to, I've been trying to add more to our playlist of songs so that things don't like keep coming up, but you know, it's on shuffle. So it gets, we get, we get some of the same every now and then. Um, all right. So I'm not supposed to stuff this, but I am still going to stuff it. I'm not going to stuff it with actual stuffing though. I'm just going to use the end ends of these things. Also, I'm just going to use this little skewer to do that. Preferred method for stuffing up things with a, that have a tiny entrance there. Naughty Flowers, hello, how are you? Naughty Flowers is the one that helps us do Spanish translations for our patterns. Uh, I believe she's working on the, on the Earth Day patterns right now, and the um, what was it? The uh, uh, 
the 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 Bonimals. She just finished up the Bonimals pattern. So the Bonimals now have a Spanish translation version of it, which is pretty awesome. So if you are a Spanish language speaker or know someone that's Spanish language speaker, we have uh, PDFs for Spanish for a pretty good amount of them now. She's done like a lot of our patterns already. So, but we're working back in the catalog now. And uh, yeah, it's it's gonna be more of an offer on Club Crochet, I think in the near future, um, once we can get all of the patterns redesigned to include a Spanish language version. Uh, and it would be cool to do that for a lot of other languages too. I think French would be a fun one. Um, Spanish was the biggest one because we have a huge uh, uh, we have a huge audience in um, Brazil, which I thought was really interesting. Anybody here from Brazil in the live stream? Yes, Elena's Crochet Corner. This is going to be this month's crochet kit. Um, I am going to be sending out an email. I actually meant to send it out yesterday, um, but I totally goofed that up. So I'm going to be sending out an email um, uh, uh, tonight to everybody that is a Club Crochet Pro member, uh, and they're going to be able to choose their crochet kit. Um. I forgot to export the addresses yesterday, so you actually do have, uh, you can sign up for a Club Crochet Pro membership right now and get this month's crochet kit. Um, but like literally, this live stream is the like the last chance you have to sign up for a pro membership. Uh, pro membership gets you kits mailed to your door each month with all the materials that you need to make whatever we're making. So this month's crochet kit was for one of those five kits. So you get to choose between the ferret or the dugong or the pangolin, the taper or the snowy plover. You can make any of those patterns um, and I have them in the, uh, uh, I'll, I'll be sending out an email after this live stream to everybody that's a pro member so they can decide which kit they want. And if you don't decide on a kit, you get one of them at random. So that is how it works. Ooh, Sarah, nice catch. I didn't realize that. We should do Portuguese. <laughs> I didn't realize that Portuguese, that Brazil spoke Portuguese because I am a culturally uh, goofball, cultural goofball. Good catch, Sarah. So we gotta, we gotta find someone that does Portuguese translations as well. And German, yes, German would be cool. Ooh, Naughty Flowers are going out of town. Where are you heading to? Yes. Kelly, Japanese would be very cool. Uh, I have been practicing a lot of Japanese, but um, I don't think I'm ever going to be good enough to be able to actually do translations for Japanese. However, I did learn a new word this week. Ripa means splendid. So I could say... Kore wa ripa desu. This is splendid. I think it's kind of like wonderful too. I think it's a. I think splendid is like the closest translation. I think. I think all these things. Yeah, so this week I've been uh, working a lot more on stitch stuff. Uh, I've been crocheting a few orcs and uh, a troll. I'll share them in a little bit after I finish all the... I think after I finish the legs, I'll do a little show and tell for you. Show you what I've been making this week. Yes, Crocheted Sloth. I do pay uh, for translation, so... Yes... Yes. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then we need to increase it up. I don't think I messed up the first one. I do have yarn in between my toes. That's the problem with crocheting standing up now. Is that I get yarn in between my toes every now and then. And it is an uncomfortable feeling. Sometimes. Just keep rocking and rolling. One. 
to. I do want to start getting back into doing more Bonimals again. We're going to be doing like an update to the PDF. Um, I think sometime in May, I'm going to be updating the PDF to include like the elephants and stuff. So we'll probably be doing more Bonimals live stream soon as well. Should be pretty fun. One. Two. But it's been so nice outside every day that I think just like, I think a lot of people in the channel have been realizing that it's like, oh my God, it's so nice out. Let's, let's go out and have a nice Sunday out, which is great. Maybe we'll do an outdoor live stream someday. Let's crochet in the park or something. That'd be pretty fun. Okay, now we need to change back to our jute. Ooh, Amy Groomy Boy says, what should I make? Ooh, what was the last thing you made? What's the last thing that you made? I think you should make... Hmm. You know what? You could try making something at random. We have a random pattern like uh, generator on our site. I don't know if you knew about that. Um, I haven't really put much attention to it, to be honest, but there is a random pattern generator part on our website. Here, I'll show you it. One sec. So if you go to the, I think you can even pull it up on the app itself. Yeah, let me log in real quick. There we go. Okay. Once this logs in can't see that just kidding it's all blacked out anyhow all right so if you go to i think if you go to library oh you know what it doesn't work on this oh maybe it will let's see no no you need to do it on the computer yeah you need to do it on the computer but on the computer you can do a random pattern you can choose it's in the menu on the website you you click library and then the bottom one on the library says random pattern and i think it should pull up just like a random lesson from the library which is pretty cool pretty cool we i really want to start using it a lot more in the future but you know i haven't had a chance to work it on it that much yeah it's less of an app uh, we're, we're working on an app. I would like to create an app, an actual app for the store soon. But it's more of a, like, you can add it to your home screen and it kind of works as an app. Let me show you. So if you go to um, Lunar 6, if you go to clubcrochet.com on your browser, on your regular browser. Sorry, I was looking up this game, Saifu um because it looks pretty cool you're like a ninja anyhow so if you go on this app and then you go to just clubcrochet.com and then you log in you can click this down here and you can go and add it to your home screen and then it adds it to your home screen and when you open it it looks like this it looks like a little like an actual little app which is pretty cool you have your profile you got your saved patterns too there's the whole library. Here's all my saved patterns. Yeah, it's pretty neat. It's a neat little trick. It's a neat little trick. We're working though on an actual, um, an actual app for the website. So hopefully we'll have one of those soon. Um, there's a few little things that I want to fix before we do an app and create. We're trying to create like a build your own patterns generator so you can like choose different parts from different patterns and like design your own pattern with that. Um, so I really want to get that out first before we actually start working on an actual app. But we are working on something. So it'll come out. It'll be there eventually. Amanda is there or will there be a tutorial for this? You just joined. Yes, there is a tutorial right here. Right down there. Clubcrochet.com slash ferret. You can also find it in the description of the video. But yes, there is a pattern for this and it's free. It's free. Um, if you want to get the PDF version of the pattern, 
uh, you will need to donate to download. I highly suggest you donate to download. It goes to a good cause, the World Wildlife Fund. Um, in if you donate to this live stream, also you get your you get this pattern. So if you click the little, um, there should be a little dollar icon up there, or there's maybe in the chat it says like so much raised donate to download you can donate to download there and you will get the pdf version of the pattern that way as well all right so we got our legs done i think right yeah they got like a little bit of a curve to them but yeah we got our legs done now we need to do uh those are just the front legs so now we got to do the back legs i'm also going to crack my neck ready That was crazy. Tasha, we oui, c'est vrai. Oui, oui. Comment ça va? Ça va bien? Ah, oh, thank you, Tina. Yeah, so Tina saved uh, the website on her on her iPad. That's pretty dope. I actually haven't played around on the app on my iPad as much, but I know it's designed for the iPad. So that's pretty cool. So that's pretty cool. All right, so now we're making the back legs. Uh, the back legs are all made in black, so that's nice. We don't need to change colors. We don't need to change colors. So what I'm kind of thinking what we, what we do for this pattern is I saw a picture. I was looking up crocheted, or no, I was looking up just ferrets, pictures of ferrets when I did this, um, when I was doing this pattern. And I saw a picture of a goblin riding a ferret on, and it had a little harness on the ferret. And I thought, oh my God, that's too cute. So today, I think what we're gonna try to do is make a little tiny harness for our ferret that we can make so that uh, a goblin can be riding our ferret because that just sounds too adorable. We might crochet a goblin for it, but I have so many crocheted goblins, so I might just go ahead and just use one of those. We'll see. We'll see how long this takes and how long it takes to make a little harness for it. But I do think that would be really cute, don't you? A little a little ferret mount for a goblin? Are you kidding me? <laughs> that sounds so cute. It sounds so cute. <laughs> All right. We're just working on some leggies now. It's leg day. Man, I haven't worked out in too long. Too long. But I found a good hack so that I don't have to work out as much. Um, here's a little life hack for you guys. If you uh, are not really into working out, but you still want to stay somewhat in shape, get a standing desk. Get a standing desk. Play video games standing up. Do like 90% of your life <laughs> of your waking life standing up because that's what I do and uh, it's kind of nice actually I, I you know it, at the, in the beginning I was like oh my god I'm so tired of standing and I had to sit every now and then um, but I couldn't sit too much because my back hurt so bad but now I'm kind of like my back start stopped hurting as much by the way I found out what happened um, I don't think I ever told you guys this what happened was I sprained my back. I don't know how I did it, but I had sprained my lower back. I also have a slight herniation in the back, but it's mostly that I sprained it. And uh, so it's been healing and my back feels a lot better now. I can sit now, but now that I have like built this habit of just standing up all the time, I kind of love it. So I'm kind of just gonna keep standing up all the time because it's great. But yeah, that's the dealio. I play a lot of video games standing up too. I really like playing video games standing up. I don't know why. It makes me better. I'm a better video gamer. It is kind of fun though. It's There's something fun about playing video games standing up that is unique. Ooh, can... It's Meow asks, can you do a tutorial on the Bunny Bonimal? There is a tutorial for the Bunny Bonimal. It's already out. You just have to get the book. Um, it's got a full video tutorial for it. It's got the PDF version. It's got the written version. Um, you either need a membership level account or you can purchase the PDF 
Uh, it's all at clubcrochet.com slash um, If you get a membership to the website, you can get access to the PDF also. And you can even get a membership for, you can get a free trial, but it's also only $5 a month. It's a great way to support this channel. And yeah, it's, it's, a, cool, it's a cool little system. It's a cool little system that we got in place on the website where it's pretty cheap to get access to all of the patterns on the website. So yeah, if you have a membership level account, you have access to every pattern on the website. So it's, it's a pretty good deal, I think. All right, so we just finished round six, I think. We're, we're going stitch marker list, so you'll have to bear with me here. I'm pretty sure it's back here is the end of the round. Yeah, it's, yeah, so one, two, we're in two stitches in. Okay. And then we need an invisible decrease. We're free of stitch markers in today's video. We're going stitch marker list. You know, it kind of brings a little bit of excitement to the pattern though, because you never know when you're gonna mess it all up. <laughs> how fun, how exciting. <laughs> how exciting, I could goof this up at any point because I'm not paying attention. <laughs> Single crochet one more. And then we'll do our flattening thing but we need to stuff this thread into the end first. We're almost done with all the legs though. Which is great. It'll be a kind of, I think it'll be somewhat of a short live stream. However, we are gonna do that goblin writing this dude. So there will be some, uh, yeah, there's gonna be some difference there. Ooh, ooh, mint and moment. You know what, dude? Oh, oh, okay, wait, wait, let me, let me answer, let me answer the two questions that I just got first. Um, question, do you put your stitch marker into one stitch back after a round? Do you put your stitch marker one stitch back after a round? Oh, no, so what I do for my stitch markers, Angel, so Angel Prez asked that. Angel, if you watch the tutorial for any of these patterns, um, you're, you'll see how I use stitch markers. I actually you just use an, an additional strand of yarn to do, to do stitch markers. I find it's a lot easier and way easier to get rid of. Um, and it keeps track of your rounds a little bit better than actually using like a plastic or, or uh, you know, metal stitch marker. It's easier just to use an extra strand of yarn. Uh, so check out those tutorials if you want to see how I do that. Um, I'll show you basically how in the next leg. I'll just show you real quick. I won't use a stitch marker the whole time, but I'll use it for a sec just to give you an idea. All right, yeah, I think we're good. That's the back leg. Cool. Cut it, chain one, pull through. Um, all right, let me get started on this back leg, on this second back leg and show you how I do stitch markers. We need a little bit of yarn in a different color. That's what's important here. Here, we'll use this teal. I have just a little bit of spare teal yarn right here with some of my hair in it. <laughs> All right, so this is how I do stitch markers. Angel, I'll put the teal right there on my shoulder for a second as I get it started. Um, yeah, living life on the edge. So once I finish my first round of stitches, for this pattern, it's gonna be uh, nine stitches, or six stitches to start. One, two, three, four, five, and six. It's a little tighter. Now before I close it up, what I do is I take my little strand of yarn and I put it right in the center of the hole of the magic loop. If I can. Struggle bus, here we go. All right, so right in the center of the magic loop and then I just pull the magic loop tight around that. And then all I do is I fold this strand over like that. And after every round, I'll keep folding it over. So I'll just show you at the, at the end of this round how I do that. But I'll just get going here. This is not a tutorial video other than, you know, that. 
I'm not actually showing you how to crochet this pattern in this video though, because I already did a whole video tutorial. If you want to check it out, it's at clubcrochet.com slash um, ferret. You can see the link on the bottom. So stop it, you know, geez. <laughs> but yeah, at the end of each round, I just fold it over. So that's how I do stitch markers. I think it's a lot easier personally, but let me know. Um, ecru is white, right? Or is it like an ivory? I would say it's more like an ivory. It's kind of like a an off-white. So here is ecru. And do I have any white? Yeah. Yeah. Here's white. So you can see what the difference is. It's like just off-white. Just barely. All right. So this is stitch number six. And now you can see what I do. So I take the long end from the stitch marker and I just fold it over and ignore it and then I just crochet around it just ignoring it like that and that keeps track of where the ends of the rounds are now, I'm not going to use this because we're living life on the edge in this video <laughs> uh, but yeah see ya Sarah enjoy your movie what movie are you watching if you're still around um, it's meow what do, uh, what if you don't have a membership account like me? I'm, I'm assuming you're talking about for the bottomless pattern. Um, for the bottomless pattern, you can purchase it. You can purchase the whole book. It's uh, $9.99 for the book. Um, yeah, so that's the other option. You can purchase the whole book. Uh, the membership does give you a free trial if you want to just try it out and then cancel it. Although, you know, I don't suggest doing that because... Uh, because it helps support the channel and it's a cool thing to do so you should keep your membership please <laughs> but you don't have to you can do whatever you want you can live your life um mint and moment okay so this is the question i wanted to talk about so mint and moment says you should make a ten dollar tier we are working on a ten dollar tier we're going to work on a new tier for the website called the uh we're going to call it the designers tier it's going to include a whole new series on how to design your amigurumi. It's going to include that build your own patterns uh, uh, system that we're designing, and uh, yeah, a bunch of a bunch of perks like that. It'll just have a bunch of extra perks, and we're also going to try doing for the ten dollar perk a. It's going to be a pin membership as well. So not only do you get all these designer perks, but you also get. Uh, a monthly pin mailed to your door. So we're working on a designs for a full year's worth of pins. So you can get some pins. I think I messed this up. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, it's only got five stitches around. I either missed a stitch. I think I missed a stitch somewhere. Somewhere. I don't know where. We're going to redo it, though. Whoop! That's what I get for using a stitch marker, you know? Missed stitches. <laughs> Not really. Um, ooh, Angel, that's an interesting problem. Angel says that uh, your their stitches are more shifted to the left than mine were in the video pattern. That's interesting. Yeah, mine really shift to the right, like a lot. Um, it might be that you're using the yarn under instead of the yarn over for your stitches. So a lot of people do their single crochets. They, it's called the X single crochet. It's a different kind of single crochet. Um, it's not like really that different, but basically you're instead of doing what I'm doing right here, where I go into the stitch like that, and then yarn over like that, they yarn under. So they grab hold of the yarn like that instead of going like that. Um, it changes your stitches a little bit. Uh, it makes color changes a little different as well. But it might alter how the yarn like trails off. So maybe that maybe that changed it. I don't know. I don't know how that happened. I'll have to test that out. Let me know. Is that how you do it, Angel? How do you, how do you do your single crochets? Ooh, I should make a cat. I should make a cat. I have I have a few cats um, that I've that I've worked on, but I, I want to work on more cat tutorials. Uh, I want to definitely do um, a miniature cat bonhomie, a cout, as you would say, a kitty cout, a couty cout. <laughs> but other than a cat. 
like that. I do want to do some other cat patterns. I'd like to do a big cat eventually. Like a big floofy one, like Jimbo. Our sleepy kitty, he's so sleepy right now. He's just sitting right, right there. Right there and he's sleeping. He's so cute. I'd show you him, but I can't move the camera. And also he would wake up. Loving life! How you doing? How you doing today? Hope you're having a great day. Hope you're having a great day. Oh, gee whiz. I've got to make a character for my campaign that I'm working on for Friday that talks like that. Ah, hey guys, how you doing? Uh, I feel like his name would be... We need a goblin's name that talks like that. What would a goblin's name be that talks like that? Like Fit, Fitz or something. Um, jeez, I don't know. One more. Raw there. All right, we're back on track. Back on track. <laughs> Wrong. Wrong song. Oh, you do yarn overs, Angel. You don't do yarn unders. How strange then. I wonder why your stitches veer more left than mine. Hmm. That's interesting. Very interesting. Daryl. Oh, I like Daryl. Oh, uh, hey guys. Hey, uh, my name is Daryl the Goblin. Daryl the Goblin. Ah, gee whiz. Alright, that looks pretty good. That's not bad for the leg. It's not bad at all. It's not bad at all. Is it? I've got a few characters that I've already made for the game. There's a uh, a wizard. He's not really a wizard. He's a he's called uh, the Grand Seer. His name is Poggle the Mind. And he talks like that. Hello, my name is Poggle the Mind. Except he always talks in third person. So he goes, Poggle always talks in third person. Hmm, Poggle will ponder upon this further. That's his catchphrase. But I wrote a whole introduction for it. I love it. I, I spent, like, I've been spending a lot of time uh, doing that. Also, I made a, you know what? Let me show you that. Well, let me finish these legs first, and then I'll, and then I'll do some show and tell from what I did this week. Maybe I'll do a couple of, of show and tells today. First, I'll show you the things I crocheted, and then I'll show you the things I drew, because I did some drawing this week, too. And coloring. I did a lot of coloring. Because I like to color. Ooh, we definitely can name this ferret Noodle. I mean, wait, you want to name it Noodle? Or do you want to name this ferret and, like, you you called the ferret, like, as an adjective, a noodle. This ferret noodle. Which do you mean? Crocheting it pretty tight there. Yeah, actually, it's on, it's on, we're on track, we're on track. Nothing's, nothing's gone wrong yet. Stuff this little thread in there. First lurk, lurch. There we go. And then finish this leg up. Wait, wait. The ferret's name is Noodle. Oh, okay. Okay. I mean, I don't hate the name Noodle. Like, I think we all love, I think we all love Noodles, right? I think that probably 99% of the world I would say probably likes noodles. They're just fun. It's a fun word also, but they're fun to eat. They're in almost every culture. 
Everybody likes noodles. And it is a good name for a ferret. Hey, doodle. Boom. Boom. We got legs. All right, let me do a little show and tell. Show and tell. I wish I had like a little, like a stinger right now, you know, like a, not like a stinger, but like a, like a stinger, you know, <laughs> like, like a little sound effect that went, it's show and tell. Anyhow. So this week I have been crocheting some goblins and trolls and stuff for that campaign that I've been working on. And first off, I'm going to show you Jules's. So this is going to be Jules's character whose name is Humphrey. It's already named it Humphrey. Look at how nice, I need to fix this because she tied it. She tied his little neck thing, but it's coming undone. So I need to fix that. But she did a little nice braid in his necklace. He's got this little outfit on. You can actually take that outfit off. A fun little earring there. I like him. I think he looks so, so nice. Boop, boop. Jimbo doesn't like him. He keeps knocking him over. But I also made him a little bag because in the game they're going to find these bags. So I made him this little satchel you can put on like this. And actually it can be opened and, and they can put stuff in it. Okay. It's pretty cool. Pretty cool. So that is Humphrey. That's the first one I made this week. Pretty fun. And then I made... Um, this is for another person in the campaign. His name is Kyle. Not this orc. He still has to name his orc. Um, I haven't shown him a picture of it yet. But he can name it whatever he wants. Um, I did this like longer hair on it, which I kind of liked. I think it needs a little something else. I'm thinking maybe like a shoulder pad or something that will go on him. Um, he's supposed to be a big tough guy. Maybe a sword. Well, he'll have to buy a sword if he wants to have a sword in the game. We'll figure it out. But he's pretty much done. I like his eye here a lot. I did like a little squint on that eye that I like. So that one's pretty cute. And then for, oh, and then I made him a backpack also. So I actually made this backpack not necessarily for him. It's for like other characters too. Um, so it can be for him. It can be for a different one. I made it extra big just in case someone wanted to play an, o an ogre and have an ogre for it. And it actually gets unbuttoned so you can make it different sizes. So like there's that size or there's this size or there's this size if you want it for like a goblin you can have a little itty bitty hole this one's kind of cute though let's do like we'll do it like well you get the gist i'm gonna just button it regular it does fit on him it's not it's not a great fit for him because he's so tiny and this is such a big backpack but it'll be really good for an ogre if someone decides to play an ogre See, it goes on him like that. Obviously, it can be opened up. I think I'm going to do another little pouch here on the side of it, too. It's like a backpacker's backpack. I put felt, I put stuffing in it just so that it, like, fills up a little bit. But I like this one a lot. And then uh, the last one I made is actually for a, um, a fan, Evan. So Evan's been emailing me. Uh, they're a big fan of the goblins and stuff. And uh, I told him I would crochet him a little goblin or a troll or something. And so he did a, I have this form that he filled out and he said that his his orc uh, eats sand. That's the big thing that, that Evan's orc does. He really likes to eat sand. So I kept thinking, I'm like, what? How would I make a character look like he eats sand? So I did the tongue out like that and I gave him this fun little hat, which I don't know why, but to me it feels like someone that eats sand would have this hat on. <laughs> I don't know why. I did a fun texture on it so that it like does it like a swirl. See? And I used actually the same yarn that I used for the snowy plover for it. I don't know. It was pretty fun. I like this guy a lot. I did give him little sideburns too, and I gave him a tan um, uh, loincloth just because it was fun. I did like a little shoulder pad on it. I don't know. I like it. I like this one a lot. I, I actually think this one's one of my. Uh, I, this hat specifically, I think, really takes it over the edge. So. I really like this guy a lot. So those are what I crocheted this week. I'll do another um, I'll do another show and tell in a little bit after maybe after I make the face for our for our um, black for our our noodle. Keep forgetting he's got a name noodle. So maybe I'll 
I'll do another show and tell in a little bit, and I'll show you all the uh, illustrations that I did for it. So I did a bunch of drawings for the map for the game, which I'm so proud of. I think I, I took a lot. I spent like way too long doing it. I colored it and I drew it and I yeah. It's like the main city of the game. Anyhow, let's get back to crocheting our noodle. <laughs> How are you guys doing? How are you doing out there? Alice Lee, hey! Tiny legs, yes, I do. I like to give them little tiny legs. I also stuffed each of those little goblins and orcs up with a bunch of nickels and dimes. Or nickels and pennies. So they're really heavy. So that they stand up really well just in case, like, Jimbo wants to knock them over in the middle of the game. Just, just have a fun. Just have a fun is all. There, there, there we go. That stitch did not want a crochet hook in it. It was like, no, thank you. Another time, please. Yes, uh, loving life. Well, actually, no, but yes. Um, Loving Life asks, do you have to donate to download the PDF patterns? Um, you do have to donate to download the PDF patterns unless you have a membership level account. Um, that also gives you PDF patterns. But I highly suggest you donate anyhow because it's for a good cause. Um, it helps protect these actual uh, uh, animals in the wild because they are endangered. 100% of the proceeds for the PDFs go to the World Wildlife Fund. So... The answer is yes and no, but also you should anyhow donate because it's a good cause. And I spent a long time on the PDFs. Uh, they look really good. <laughs> like, really good. I'm really proud of them. Yeah, basically how it works, too, is if you donate for $5, you get one of these PDFs. If you donate for $20, you get the whole bundle of five PDFs. And then if you donate for $30 or more... You get this month's or this year's bundle, and you also get last year's bundle, which includes the patterns for a sloth, and an uh, a sloth, a red panda, and a rhino, and it includes the pattern for the Earth itself. So, it's a pretty good. It's I think it's a pretty good uh, deal, and also it goes to a good cause. So it's like, you know, you should, you should. All right, so we are working now on the color changes of the face, which are a very interesting. They got this little cute little mask, which I love on these ferrets. Oh my God, it's so cute. I like masks on animals. I think it's so cute when they have a little tiny mask on it, like they're a little, like they're a little, uh, like they're a little criminal, a little bank robber or something. Like raccoons. Oh my god, raccoons. They're so cute. I love raccoons. I think my spirit animal is a raccoon. And I think that I legitimately think my spirit animal is a raccoon. If I were to do a Patronus or whatever, I think it would come out as a raccoon. Because I stay up insanely late. I only eat trash. And I'm a little stinker. <laughs> What's your spirit animal? What is your spirit animal? Let me know. I'm reading. Is there a minimum you have to donate? Uh, $5 gets you the pattern. Um, but if you donate on this live stream, there is no minimum. You can donate for $1 and you'll still get the PDF for this ferret. But only on this live stream. So that is the minimum there. Um, does Jimbo like catnip? Not really. I mean, a little bit. Uh, Phoebe, our other cat, loves catnip. She is a fiend for catnip. But Jimbo is, is indifferent to catnip. It would be... I don't know. I, I haven't really played around with catnip with him for a while, too, though. So maybe he likes it more now. He's grown up. Finger cracking time. Ooh. Bandit. Bandit. I, had a, I have a friend named Emilio who has a dog named Bandit. And we always said that Bandit's voice would go like, My name's Bandit. <laughs> Hola, Andre. Andrea? Andre. I think I'm just Andre. 
a fox. Kelly's is a fox. A curious snail's is a sloth. You'd think it was a snail, but no. It is a sloth. Lee's spirit animal is a mouse. Just a cute little mouse. I love mice. I would, I would probably own a mouse if I didn't have these cats. I like mice. They're so cute. They're so cute. We probably do own a mouse, just like not, we don't know about it. <laughs> Two, three, five, six, seven, and eight. And then the yarn. This week I started playing Banjo Kazooie. Like the old one on the N64. Um, they have it on the Switch now. The Nintendo Switch. So I started playing it. Uh, it's it's pretty fun. It's a pretty fun one. I like it. You know, it's got it's got like it's an old game, so it's got like the old game feels, but I still like it a lot. <laughs> Ruth says, I only eat trash, but I've never felt a sentence calling to me out this much. <laughs> I'm a trash boy. I like eating trash. No, but I do. I like, uh, <laughs> no, but I do. No, I like, um, I really like chips and candy and chocolate and pizza and, you know, trash food. Like, it's not trash, but it is trash. Uh-oh. I've woke up the slumbering Jimbo. Oh, my God. He's holding a little squid. Because I put my little crocheted things from last live stream on the... And he's like, oh, it's so cute. I wish I could show you. I'm just going to take a picture. Where's my phone? Here it is. I'll take a picture. Because I can't change... I can't move the... The camera. But here's a picture of it. Look it. That's what's right there. Oh my gosh, that's so cute. He's, and he's sleeping. Oh, it's so cute. It's so cute. Too cute to boot. Too cute to boot. Oh, we got a new... Man? No. Oh, never mind. It's on Etsy. On Etsy sale. Ooh, thank you, Cooper. Nice catch, Cooper. Cooper's on it, dude. Message deleted. Good job, Cooper. You're on it. I don't know how we get spam. I don't know how spam accounts like that think that they... I don't know. It's crazy to me. Like, why our channel? I don't know. The ears on your ferret are crooked, Kelly. Hmm, they're crooked. I don't know what I'm doing wrong. I don't either. Maybe, um, have you done the round after making the ears? Have you done round nine also? Because maybe the it looks crooked for round eight, but then once you get into round nine, it starts to uncrookify itself. I think that's the right, um, I think that's the right verbiage. Uncrookify. Ah, you're a crook. Am I doing this round right? No, I'm not. Oh, I actually, uh, yes, I am. Wait, one, two, three, four, four, four. yeah, I almost did it wrong. I, I did like a couple stitches wrong. Because it switches up here. It might also be uh, that you did this round wrong also. So round six that I'm on right now um, switches up. So it's it's single crochet increase three times and then increase single crochet three times. So it kind of changes the shape of it. Maybe you goof that part up? I don't know. I don't know. Hard to tell without being able to see it though. Ooh, cat. Am I Cat asks, am I excited for Doctor Strange? Heck yes, I am. Are you kidding me? I'm like so excited for Doctor Strange. It's going to be awesome. Oh my God. I'm so excited. I, I'm not going to, 
spoil anything that I've seen in all the trailers, but if you've seen the trailers, they got some Easter eggs in this one. They, they're going ham. They're going wild on this one. I'm so excited to see what happens. It seems very, very cool. So we will see what happens. But yeah, it comes out, I think, on Thursday or Friday. So I'm excited. I'm super excited. Also, uh, on Wednesday is the finale for Moon Knight, the Disney Plus show. And that show has also been super duper cool. I really, really am digging that show a lot. If you haven't checked out Moon Knight yet, go check it out. It is worth it. Two. It's weird, but it's good. Three, four, five. So right there. Yeah. Um. Oh, here's our... Ooh, Naughty Flowers asks, anyone making anything fun for Mother's Day? Great question. Is anybody making anything fun for Mother's Day? I need to make something for Mom and Mama's Day. For mi madre. When is Mother's Day? Who knows who knows what day Mother's Day is? I, I could use a I could use a heads up here. What day is Mother's Day? Go right there. Um, I think we're done with that crew. Oh, we're not actually. I shouldn't have cut that. Oh, well, that's fine. We'll come back to it. Uh, half double crochet three. One. Two. Three. And then. Half double crochet five. Three, four, and five. May 8th. Oh, shoot. It's next Sunday. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. That's so soon. Maybe we should do a Mother's Day live stream. Oh, my God. It's mu it's next Sunday. Wow. Okay. So, I got to make something for next Sunday. Like, wow. Okay. So, we got. Wait. Oh, see. Here we go. Let me make sure I have the updated version of this before I goof around here. Doop, doop. You know, I'm just gonna pull it up on my phone. I'll pull the PDF of the pattern up on my phone, make sure this is correct. But I think I see where Kelly got a little goofed up here on his on their uh on their PDE, on their pattern. <laughs> oh, that's messed up. I gotta fix that. Um, all right, and that. Jeez, I got a bunch of things screwed up on the mobile, so I gotta fix those. But let's see, we're on head round. Where was I? Round eight. Right here. One, two. Single crochet five. Yeah, no, we're right. Okay, so I think this is where you messed, or where it you think you might have messed up, Kelly. But I don't know. Um, four, five, because this ear is gonna look totally off center. See, look, it looks like one's over here, one's like way over here, so it looks like it's crooked like that. But I think it gets re, I think it gets fixed because we do like decreases and stuff, so it like changes, it like pulls it over to one side. And then one and then four. Yeah, because we're still on track. Every day is Mother's Day. Thank you, Tasha. Agreed. Every day is Mama's Day. Ooh, making a new flower. I might be down for that. Next live stream. Let's let me think about that. Let me find out what my mom's favorite. Let me remember. I think it's tulips. I think that's her favorite flower, but I'm not totally sure. Let me ask. I'll ask my dad. He should know. If he doesn't know, well, that's a different problem. 
Uh, is this pattern free? Yes. Uh, if you just go to clubchristy.com slash ferret, it is free. Uh, however, if you want to download the PDF version of the ferret, it is not free. You have to donate to download. Um, if you actually donate on this pattern, on this video right now, there should be... Let me look at it on the desktop because I'm going to assume you're watching it on desktop. Yeah, so if you if you go and scroll down beneath the chat, there's going to be a donate now button right there. If you donate using the big blue button that says donate, for any amount, it will spit out a link and you can use that link to make a uh, to download the PDF version of this pattern. So you can donate for only like a like you can even just donate for a dollar if you want. It's for a good cause. I definitely suggest that you donate if you haven't already. Um, yeah. One, two, three, four, and then we change back to our jute yarn. Boom. And then actually, I'm just gonna crochet around this one for this next stitch. This pattern's way cool too. Like if you're on the fence of crocheting this pattern, I highly suggest you check it out. It is a very unique pattern, at least for me. I've never done one like quite like this pattern before um, because like I was saying, um, Lemon Yarn Creation does like this really weird way to make a no-sew pattern that I've honestly, I've never experienced before. And just for that alone, I think it is a, Hi, highly suggested. Highly suggested. Okay, and then we do single crochet one after that, and then we invisible decrease. Okay. But yes, the pattern is free ish. The video tutorial is free. One, two, do a single crochet in the back loop for the ear. Boom. And then. Invisible decrease, okay. Right here. And then we change back to our accru. You can't donate in Australia. That's, what? That's weird. That's really weird. Um, you can donate by going to clubcourtesy.com slash earthdaylovinglife if you wanna go there to donate to download. Um, you can donate there. Uh, at that URL, you'll need to donate minimum $5 to get the PDF for this one. If you donate for $20, you'll get all the PDFs, though, for for all five of the patterns. I think it's a pretty good deal. Um, okay, we got one, two, three, four, buh, 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 and then three of these. One, two, and three. Wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. All right. Let's add our face to our little fella here. So first up, we need to add eyeballs. You still look a little wonky. Yeah, I guess they kind of look a little wonky for me too, but I don't, I don't think they're that bad. Maybe adding the eyes will help with the wonkiness. So we're gonna put one right here. And then one right here. See, that that kind of de-wonkifies the eyes a little bit. I think that's where I put the eyes. Let me look on my... Where where have I put a finished one? Oh, here it is. I have, like... I honestly have, like, four of these ferrets already. I've got so many of them. One, and then... Yeah. One, two... Yeah, I put those in the exact right spot. Cool. Lock them into place. And then we'll sew, we'll embroider on a little nose. And then we'll, uh, yeah, that, embroider on the nose. Okay, so this, a little bit of that. Thread that on our needle. Um, and let's figure out what we wanna do for our nose here. Um, I think what I'm going to first do is I'm going to come straight through the middle like that and then up just one stitch like this and out 
I switch over. Like this. And then a couple of switches over like that. And then we'll just go over that a few times. Let's see. Let's see how this looks. Boop. Bend those over a little bit. That's pretty good, right? I like that. Okay, so we'll just do this like five or six times around to kind of bulk up this little this little schnoz here. We'll have to move that middle stitch over just a little bit. Clean it up. But it'll be pretty much just lock this. Just lock this. Boop. Move that little nostril over slightly. Tighten it up. That right there is a pretty cute looking nose. I don't know what accent that was, but it's a cute nose anyhow. Make sure. Both of those tight and double knot it. Trying to make sure the knot is as far down as I can get it so it doesn't come undone by accident. Or loose. No one wants a loose nose. The things you'll smell if you got a loose nose. You don't want that. What a weirdo. Who is this weirdo? It's me talking to myself. All right. There we go. We got a face sewn on there. Let me do one more round here for the head, and then I will uh, do another little show and tell thing for you. Yes, uh, if you make this and post it on Instagram, I would love that loving life. Yes, please tag me and at Lemon Yarn Creations. Um, if you find, uh, there should be a link in the description of this video for uh, our URL or for our. Our tags on Instagram. Club Crochet is just at club.crochet. I'm at Louis Loops. And then this pattern is designed by at Lemon Yarn Creation. So make sure to tag us in the post if you if you do post it. I would love that. Blue Shell Spirit Animal is a panda. Love that. I love that for you. Um, ba -ba -ba. Chewables Bliss, does it show, uh, does the bottomless pattern show how to make the cow or the elephant in the features and additions section, or does that have to be improvised? Just want to know before buying. So it does have the instructions on how to do the cow. It doesn't show you specifically how to do the cow, but it does have the instructions on there for how to do the cow uh, in the features and additions section. Uh, the elephant isn't in the pattern yet. However, I'm working on an update for that in May. If you purchase the bottomless pattern, in uh, I will be sending out a link for an updated version whenever I do those. So I'm going to do an update in May. I'll do another update later on. Um, and it'll just be a, basically like it'll be less of an update and more like kind of like DLC, kind of like a, an extra like more content, more more an, an, a secondary ebook that you could purchase are not purchased that you get access to um, for having purchased it in the past. So that's what is coming to uh, in sometime in May for that. Okay, back to this jute. I think we're done with Ecru yarn also. I think we're done with this off-white. But let's do this right here. Boom, boom. There we go. Cut the short and I think we're good from here on put to the side all right one two three four and then invisible decrease how many just one okay cool cool Oh, got to go feed the chickens. All right, curious snail. Have fun feeding the chickens. Maybe I'll see you in a bit. That's fun. I want to feed chickens. Everything's a novelty when you don't do it normally. Whoa, that should be a lyric in a song. 
everything's a novelty if you don't do it normally. Maybe not. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Yeah, we are on track. We're doing great. Swell even. Look at that. We got little ears. We got a little face. We got our head done. We're moving on to the body. Um, okay, before I continue on to the body, I'd like I'd love to show you this. Okay, so I've been working, like I was saying, on something kind of cool. Let's see if I can pull up the image for it. Add a media source. Um, add a new source. Let's call it media source. That doesn't matter. Um, so, I've been making a... Uh, Oh, oh, I did that wrong. Oopsies. Let's delete that. So I've been making a uh, a map for my game that I'm going to be playing on uh, Friday with some friends. I've been designing like basically a new um, a new like version way to play Stitched, where you can play it like kind of more like D and D. You actually get to like explain like things that are happening and so I designed a map for it and there it is boom check out this cool map that I drew look at that isn't that awesome I'm so proud of it you can see all the things on it oh it's so cool there's like there's this big tower here that's gonna be Porgol's Cathedral there's like a little shopping center down here where you can see like the big pot there there's a stitched field on the left side of the river um, you can see at the top of the river they're like right up whoop, right up there at the top of the river they're they wash their clothes in the river because they're goblins and they're dumb um, there's a big hole up here in the top right all right right up ooh, right up there somewhere that's called the pit that's where people sleep I don't know I'm really proud of this I spent a long time doing it and I'm just really proud of it and I just want to show you that's it that's all I just want to show you that. Kind of cool. Yes, we totally should do a crochet meetup where we play the game. That would be dope. I'm working. So I made the map. Actually, let me show you. I'll show you another version of this map. I made a second version of the map that actually has, hold on, numbering. What is this one? Yeah. So I made a second version of the map that has no, has letters for each of like the things that you can explore on the map. Um, there's like gonna be a little mystery that you have to solve, and then you have to find something. It's really cool. I'm super proud of it. It does kind of have a uh, a Club Penguin vibe to it. Sir Pearl Gray, how you doing? Welcome to the live stream. Sir Pearl Gray is the one that actually designed this one right here that we were talking about earlier. This is his Angie the Anglerfish pattern. And then we have this one also he designed. His pattern's coming out uh, in two weeks. So in two weeks, his uh, his pangolin pattern is going to be coming out. It's a wild one. It's going to be a fun live stream. It's going to be probably a long live stream, but it should be a fun one. One, two, three, four, five. Six. I need to count these stitches so I know that I'm on track. Seven. I'm pretty sure I'm good, but eight, nine, ten. Oh my god, Jimbo is so asleep. Ten. Twelve. Yeah, we're good. We're on track. All right. All right, we're on track. Yeah, uh, Phillips pangolin pattern is. It has got some really unique uh, unique things in it like I haven't seen before. Um, but yeah, it's very cool. Tokens even? What do you mean by that, Tasha? Tasha said, and you could crochet tokens even. I don't know what that means. No, I'm not right sure what that means. It does look like Club, uh, cl uh, the ping uh, 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 Club Penguin. All right. Okay, so we're on to round 12. 
Oh, that's crazy, right? That's crazy. I just cracked my neck for like the sec second time. In oh my gosh. Man. <laughs> wow. At least there's going to be witnesses for when I accidentally paralyze myself by cracking my neck too much. <laughs> All right. <laughs> it's not funny. It's kind of funny. Not funny, though. Ooh, Mimi, how are you? Welcome to the live stream. You've been fasting for a month? What? No way. Are you serious? What for? That's amazing. Like, well, I mean, maybe, hopefully, well, I don't know. Why, why? Why are you fasting for a month? That's a long time to fast. Why do they call it fasting? I guess it's a better way to say just like I'm not eating. I don't know. Visible decrease. And then single crochet five. Two. Four. Five. And then. Oh, it's six, actually. Yeah, okay. Boom, we're on track. Okay. It's run. Oh, it's for a holy month for Muslims. Wow. That's a that's wild. That is that is some dedication, I gotta say. Do you like okay, so so Mimi, I want I want some more I wanna understand this a little bit more. So when you fast, do you eat literally you can't just eat nothing for a month, right? You have to eat something, but do you, or do you not? Do you eat nothing at all for a whole month? Tell me more. Tell me more. I wanna I wanna know more. Yeah, I don't know if I can survive that either. Well, maybe you could after Maybe you could. You probably could, but yeah. You know. Wow. I mean, I've gone without eating for a whole day by accident a few times, actually. I actually almost did that yesterday. Oh my God. Yesterday, I almost went the entire day without eating. And Jules and I went to a show. And then we got back at like midnight. And I was like, oh wow, actually, I don't think I've eaten all day. And she's like, what? And I was like, yeah, I forgot to eat today. Oopsies. <laughs> so I ate really late when I come, when I came home. It was, I ate a lot though. Dawn prayer. Whoa, that's crazy. Wow. That's super interesting, Mimi. Thank you for sharing. That's a lot of not eating. Okay, we're on track. Finish those two rounds. I should check this off so I don't lose track of where I'm at. By the way, if you get the PDFs, there are check marks in the PDFs, with, which are pretty useful for making sure that you're on track. Um, we got to stuff the head a little bit. We don't need to stuff it too much right now. Just a just a wee bit of stuffing. Oh, Jimbo, he's so cute. All right, got our head stuffed up. Four and then, in okay, so we're increasing up now, cool. Three, four, and then an increase. Yeah, I was supposed to do a live stream with um, Drewby Zoo last week, but I totally dropped the ball on that. So maybe I'll do one. Uh-oh, Jimbo's gonna sneeze. Are you gonna sneeze? No? So Jimbo has a, he's got cat herpes. <laughs> he's got a cat problem where he sneezes all the time. He like sneezes 
He sneezes at least like seven times a day. And he'll shoot out these crazy snot rockets. And they're really nasty. They're really gross. Actually, when I was recording this pattern for this video, or for, yeah, when I was recording the video tutorial for this pattern, he was in the room and shot a snot rocket like in the very beginning of crocheting and i was like oh my god and i cleaned it up and i actually because i knew i wasn't going to use that video i knew i had to restart it anyhow i showed it on the video it's like look at this look how big this snot rocket is it was really gross they're super nasty but also like kind of endearing in their own way i don't know <laughs> they're not but they are you know all right so we're on round uh i'm on round 16 now okay how are Jules and Jack Gurgle? Well, Jack is doing great. You know, he's been he's been sitting in a mud bath for a while, just like eating grubs and money. You know how Jack is. Um, Jules is doing good too. She actually just did a um, a live show with someone this morning, uh, so she played some music with a uh, a friend of hers on a live stream. And yeah, they just like kind of, they just, she just kind of played some music. So she's still out, but she'll be, she'll be back, uh, probably before the end of this live stream. So maybe she'll be able to come say hi, but she's been out. She's had a long day. She had to wake up at 8 AM to go to, to drive down South to, um, the town a little further down from us to go do this music show. And uh, I think she's very tired. She was she was up late last night, too. So it was a long one. Oopsies. Okay, wait. So one. This is what happens when you don't use a. There we go. when you don't use a stitch marker. All right, we're adding on our arms now. Okay, so this is why this pattern is a no-sew pattern. So like you'd think you'd sew these arms on, but actually all you have to do, it's really cool. Hey, Philip, have you crocheted this yet? You should totally crochet this if you haven't already, Philip. Like it is a, such a cool pattern. Um, I don't know if you've crocheted any of the other patterns from the um, collaboration yet, but this one is super unique. I think you'll really appreciate what, um, uh, what Andrea did in this pattern. Just mentioning that. Oop. Okay. But yeah, this is how you do it. You line this up and then you crochet through the end of the rounds on one leg like this. You go through one of the legs and then go through the next stitches on the body. And then you just you just decrease it or you just single crochet into both at the same time and it essentially sews the leg on have you ever used this in any of your other patterns have you ever seen a pattern that does this before because i don't think i've ever seen a pattern that does this before and it's genius i remember when i first realized it in the pattern like i was reading it uh like the pdf for it or the the rough draft for it and i was like this pattern's a nose so how are you gonna do that and then i then I made the legs and I was like, oh my God, if she's doing what I think she's doing here, that's way cool. That's why cool. And then we do three, one, two, three. And then we do our next leg over here. Yeah. Go through one of the stitches on the leg and then one on the body. Like that. Right? Because there's three in between each. Yes. That's how... Oh, Naughty Flowers. That's how you make your dolls. You love it. I love it. It's such a unique idea. I mean, obviously, it takes some, uh, some thought in designing like where you're going to put the legs and stuff but like it's a pretty cool technique if you ask me hey you should like this video if you haven't yet already by the way
Ooh, good question, Jasmine. Jasmine says, uh, hey, at Angel, you might be crocheting inside out. Um, so if you're crocheting and your stitches look like mine right now, where they look like little bees, that's going to be the right way to do it. If they look the other way, which will look like this on the inside. So if your stitches look like that with like a little bump in between each stitch, then you're working inside out. That might affect how your stitches are. Um, yeah. There's a few, I mean, there's a few different reasons why it could be that it's going back or your stitch markers veering, but yeah. Ooh, Sir Progre, you just finished the dugong. Very cool. That pattern was cool too, right? It was really interesting how he did slip stitches and half double crochets to do like some weird, uh, I, I don't know. I thought it was a really unique idea for how to do shaping for his amigurumi. One, two, three, four, five, six. Seven, eight, nine. What did you think about that one, Sir Pro Gray? I liked how easy it was. And I really liked how he did the tail. Um, I thought that was really interesting. I haven't really done that for a pattern. Um, pretty much, uh, so like this one, the ferret and the, um, the ferret and the dugong both do that, this system for sewing, like seaming together the leg and then having like a really simple sew together that uh, I thought was really cool. It makes it really easy. They did it in the tail as well. Um, Drew did it, did the, the like seeming together system in the tail, which made it way cool. Made it way cool, which I liked. I'm just so like stoked with every one of these patterns this year. They're so unique in all in their own way. And all very cute. Everybody really kicked butt. It was like a great, what a great collaboration. One, two, three, four, five. And then an increase three times. Okay, cool. Two, three, four, five. And then an increase. Um, which pattern of mine do I recommend slash like the most? Do you mean of mine? Are you talking to uh, Mimi? Are you talking to me? Are you talking to Philip? Are you talking about these patterns or are you thinking just like any of the, my patterns in general um if you're talking about this collaboration which pattern did i like the most i think i'm hmm i think i might maybe the dugong or this ferret just because they're like so unique I don't know. They're all they're all like so unique in their own ways. If you're talking about which of my own patterns I like the most, I think I like um, probably my goblins the most, or the or the bonimals. I don't know. I have so many. I, I it's hard to pick a favorite. I really like crocheting bonimals because they're so easy to crochet, and you can crochet so many of them. Um, I also really like the T-Rex pattern. I wish I'd made more T-Rexes because it's just, I just like it a lot. Of Phillips patterns, I really like Phillips' uh, rainbow pattern. He's got this really cool rainbow and I just like it. It's just, I don't know, there's something about his rainbow. It's like a rainbow and a cloud. Uh, it's on his YouTube channel actually, so go check that out. And I just really like it. I think it looks really nice and it's just cool. Um, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the pangolin's dope. The pangolin is, it is, it is a wild ride. I will admit that like it is a roller coaster of a crochet pattern, but that is what makes it so crazy cool to make. Cause it's like, how, when have you ever made a pattern like that? You know, when have you ever designed like, Philip, have you ever designed a pattern this like intricate or this unique? I don't think you have. I mean, I don't know. Maybe you have, but like. The claws alone, like we're not even like not even talking about this wild shaping here and like the way that you made the head to the body and all like the claws, though, super unique. The spikes, though, what? Look at this. It's wild. It's a wild. This is a wild pattern. Wild, wild. I'm excited to make it on the live stream. Couple weeks. 
Um, did you, st Alice asks, did you stuff the legs? No, I didn't. I stuffed it with the uh, excess yarn, but it doesn't, you don't have to stuff the legs for this pattern. So you don't actually have to do that. Yeah, it's pretty, pretty neat. Pretty neat. I really also like how um, Sir Pearl Grey shaped the head for his pangolin, which obviously we'll talk more about um, in a f couple of weeks. Uh, because uh, it's really cool. It, like it, it makes like kind of it's like kind of like a mouse shape for the face. He does like increases and decreases, like right here. So it makes like this like, like, kind of like a teardrop head. It's really cool. It's cool. It's a cool shape. If you want to get it early, donate to download. Donate to download. I should write a. A jingle for Earth Day next year. We're going to do another one of these collaborations next year. I don't know if we're going to do more than five. Originally, I was thinking, oh, yeah, let's up it again next year. Let's do like 10 patterns. But then I realized like, oh, my gosh, it took so much to do these five patterns that I can't do more than five. No way. No way. Like the video tutorials alone for doing five video tutorials was like, exhausting so i don't think i can do more than that next year i also think we're gonna have to get it prepared way early earlier in advance like i think we need to finish i think i want to be like two months i need like two months to get prepared for that for this collaboration next year Ooh, emily Emily says, I'm new to crochet. Any tips? Great question. Okay, so let's start with what you've been crocheting. So if you're new to crocheting, do you mean like, like how new are you to crocheting? Have you like just started this week? If you just started, like just, just started, I suggest trying to crochet some Amy Groomy if you haven't yet already. Uh, I think mostly because I think Amy Groomy is the coolest crochet stuff you can make but also it does give you a good understanding of the fundamentals of crochet if you choose an amigurumi project that's small it's um uh yeah if you choose an amigurumi project that's small it's kind of nice because like even if you make it and it's like it doesn't work out very well it only took like 30 minutes and now you can make it again and make it a lot better so i think a big tip i have for you is try try again like especially like okay so i suggest trying the octopus pattern um we have it on our website you can just go to clubcrochet.com octopus there's a video tutorial uh it's got a a varying level of difficulty i spent a long time on the video tutorial to try to make it as beginner friendly as possible and you learn a lot of different stitches for it but the biggest thing i t i'm gonna say for you um emily is that when you do this octopus pattern make it more than once try to make like three of them and don't be dissuaded about how the first few look because it probably isn't going to work out right the first couple times you make it just because you're learning you know you still need to figure it out but the pattern's really short it only should take you maybe maybe an hour to get started for your first one and then after that it becomes a lot easier um other tips uh, I suggest trying not to use acrylic yarn when you're starting out. I know it's a hard thing to ask because acrylic yarn is a lot easier to get access to and, and find, uh, but, and it's cheaper, but acrylic isn't great for the environment. So I always try to stray away from using acrylic if I can. Um, and I think the earlier on in your crochet process that you stop using acrylic, the easier it's gonna be in the long run. So maybe try using like a soft cotton or a wool yarn to start out with for crocheting. Um, yeah, I think those are some good tips. Uh, take it slow, take it easy, take your time with crocheting. Uh, use a stitch marker. That's a good tip to start out with. Use a stitch marker. It'll help out your process a lot. Um, but also start to recognize the difference between stitches. That'll help you so you don't need to use a stitch marker eventually. I think those are some, I think those are some good uh, tips. Yeah. Use, 
Um, oh, yeah, try the ghost pattern, like Jasmine says. That's a good idea, too. Hey, Zoe and... Wait. Zoe and Janny. Hey, guys. Janny was crushing a voodoo doll and lost track of time. Whoa, who's it a voodoo doll of? I hope it's not me. Ow, what was that? Ow, what was that? Just kidding. <laughs> or if it is a voodoo doll of me... Give me a little head scratch right now. That would be nice. I, I could use a head scratch. <laughs> Alright, we need six. Oh, I thought it was only five rounds of repeats. We need six rounds here. Five, yeah. So one more round. Yeah, use yarn scraps as stitch markers. That's a good tip. I like that tip a lot. Because then you could just pull out the, sti the stitch marker and stuff your character with it. Oh, there's another tip. Use use your extra threads. Always save your extra threads like this. Because you can use them to stuff into your crochet. And then you save on stuffing. You save on waste. Um, <laughs> um, and you... Uh, let's see. You save on stuffing. You save on waste. Um, uh, yeah. Also, cotton is recyclable, so if you have those extra threads but you didn't use it for stuffing or you have just like too much, you can always recycle it. So that's that's good to know. A lot of yarn is recyclable. Yeah, I think those are some pretty good tips. Ooh, ooh, actually, I got another good tip. Ooh, ooh. Sound, I sound like a monkey there. Um, another good tip for you is safety eyes. I've got some tips on safety eyes. So... He, these are the safety eyes I use. Again, if you want to get a bottle of eyes, these are in the shop. You should buy some. But big tip, get backs like this. If you find your own eyes, uh, if you don't buy the ones that I have for sale, f make sure that they have a soft plastic end like this. That'll save your hands so much trouble. Because normally when you buy eyes online, a lot of them come with like these really like I'm just trying to see if I have any near me. They, they come with these like extremely frustrating, hard to attach eyes. I might have some in here, maybe. No, I get rid of them because I don't because they're they're so painful to use. But that is a strong tip. Use soft backing for the eyes. It'll save your fingers a lot of a lot of struggle. Zoe, oh, Zoe went bowling and had a had an anxiety flare up. I'm sorry about that, Zoe. It happens to the best of us. Yeah, I heard someone say the other day, like, oh yeah, I've uh, uh, I got really bad anxiety, and I was like, and I, I immediately thought like, yeah, I mean, don't, it doesn't everybody? I I just thought like, oh, yeah, everybody's got anxiety problems, right? I mean, obviously, some people have worse anxiety problems than others, but. Personally, I've had an anxiety attacks. I've had a decent. I've had a lot more anxiety attacks since COVID, probably because I've been so, like, used to being inside and not seeing people so often that when I go out to places and see a lot of people, um, you know, I'll get like a little anxiety situation and I'll need to, uh, excuse myself to just go breathe. But I totally get it. And I just kind of assumed everybody had it. But I don't think that necessarily is the case. Find your own eyes. Exactly, Tasha. Yes. Oh, find your own... I sound like a... Like a crunchy yoga teacher. Find your own eyes. Look inward. One, two, three, four, five... I love yoga, actually. No joke. Yoga, I, I found yoga when my back started hurting really bad. I started having to do yoga, and now I love it. Except for Jimbo uh, is a nuisance whenever I have to do yoga. It's a problem. Three. Four. Five. And then, yeah, we're on track. Cool. Cool. We're actually coming up to the, we're almost like 
we're almost done with this pattern. I mean, we're not like done done. We still have a little bit more to do. And I'm going to add, you know, the little, we want to add a, uh, a harness for a little goblin on his back. But the most part of this pattern is actually almost done, which is pretty cool. Pretty cool, if you ask me. All right, eight. One, two, three, four, six, seven, and eight. And then we'll do this leg here. Boom, boom, bop. Bing, bong, bing bong. <laughs> You've seen that video? Okay, bing bong. <laughs> it's so ridiculous. Oh, you started needle felting eyes. That's interesting. I haven't needle felted very many eyes, but I am excited to see what you make with that. I what I'm really excited about doing, Philip, is that I got a. 3d printer for my birthday um this is a while back now like i got my birthday was in january but i did get a 3d printer it's right here and i'm gonna start 3d printing eyes for myself um like because now i can make not only okay so get this get this let me grab it real quick hold on right here So not only am I going to be able to 3D print like any kind of eyes that I want, like I can make like all these kind of like weird designs for eyes. Think about this. I can make like Gengar eyes. How cool would that be that you could just snap on the back? Oh my gosh, that would be so cool. But even cooler is that the stuff that I have to make my eyes with is all plant based resins. How freaking cool is that? It's all plant based, which means that it's compostable. It's pretty dope. I'm like really excited about that. Cause yeah, I mean, I just, I really like using, using like environmentally friendly products and stuff. So I'm really excited to use plant-based resin to make my eyes. Cause that's the only real part of my patterns other than the stuffing. I could do better with the stuffing too, but yeah, pretty cool. I'm really excited about that. Making my own eyes. I'm very excited. And then I'm, I think once I get like a good system for making eyes, uh, it'd be a cool thing to have plant-based um, plastic eyes available for people to purchase or in, put in my kits and stuff like that. Yeah, and we could do like custom made eyes. And then how cool would that be for the monthly kits? You'll have, you'll have like your own, like very unique materials that no, you won't be able to get anywhere else. I think that's gonna be so cool. So, so cool. Emily, ooh, very good question, Emily. Emily asks, how much stuffing is enough stuffing? Super good question. Um, the answer to your question is as much stuffing so that it holds its shape, but, that, but not too much stuffing to where you can see the stuffing through your stitches. So what I mean by that is when you put the stuffing in it, if you squish it like that, see how it comes back? It like, I squish it and then it comes back out. If you don't have enough stuffing and you do that, it'll like stay in like that. It'll like stay squished, which means that you don't have enough stuffing. Now, if you have too much stuffing, you'll know you have too much stuffing because you'll start to see your stuffing through your stitches. Um, so like in between the stitches, you'll see stuffing like starting to poke out. If I like bend this like this, if I really like put some pressure on there, you can start to see, let me zoom in here. You can start to see, see how you can start to see your stuffing through there? That's how you know, sorry, Mr. Ferret, I'm sorry. That probably would hurt. Let's give him a little back massage. There we go. Better. Um, <laughs> uh, that's how you know if you have too much stuffing or too little stuffing. Oh, dude, Johnny. Th oh my gosh, Johnny. Janny, I'm so sorry. I still. F f such a dingus. Janny just donated 50 buckaroos. 
Hold on, I can do a better whistle than that. That was a good whistle. Um, into the Jack family of a dude. Oh, oh, sorry. Nicole just texted me something. Cheney, thank you so much. That's like, that's wild. That's a wild amount. Let me put out like three things for you here to say thank you. I know. I've been saving these ones for someone just like you. Let's do, um, we'll do these. We'll just do, we'll do these two. These ones don't have names, Jenny. You need to name these. Absolutely. And these are big ones to name. So you have got a, you got some shoes to fill here. All right. Hi, Cheryl. Thanks for joining. I'm doing all right. How are you? Hope you're having a good Wednesday or Sunday. I hope you're also having a good Wednesday. <laughs> so, uh, first off, Jenny, we got we got our um, our regular parrot. It's a it's a um, shoot. What are these called? They're called. It starts with an M. I think right. Macaw. I it was with an M. So first off, we got our macaw. This, this macaw needs a name. I don't think we've ever named this macaw in this live stream. I know you've seen it before, but we've never named it. I'm getting all of the Jimbo fur off of him. Or her. You get to decide that. Obviously, it's a burb. Because, uh, duh. I always make things into burbs if I can. But you get to name our macaw. I'm going to work on a pattern for this very soon, by the way. So there's going to be new burb patterns coming out soon uh, for this macaw and the next one that you're going to see. So name your macaw that there my tie oh my god what a name that's so good that's so good all right so this is my tie my tie the macaw oh my god that's so good and then also i think this is let me make sure before i say something i shouldn't is it a i think it's a Yes. Okay. The cockatoo. I thought I almost called it a cockatiel, but I know a cockatiel is a different one. Um, my dad used to have cockatoos like this, uh, a cockatoo just like this. And so I crocheted it for him last Father's Day. Another pattern that I'm working on to come out in the library very soon. But you know what, Jenny? You get to decide what this fella's name is. So what do, would you like to name your cockatoo? So we got a cockatoo and my tie. The macaw. Oh my god. Dude, that was the best name. You you knocked it out of the park, park with that name. Very good job. That's a that's a great idea. Great name. I think I missed something else here. Da, 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 da. Yes, I'm going to make so many cool eyes. I I'm going to get like I'm kind of scared to start doing to start making eyes. Um just a little bit. Oh shoot, I was supposed to decrease, wasn't I? Wait, so I do 8 to align the leg. That gets me to here and then I do the leg. Oh, and then I'm supposed to do 1 and then a decrease. Okay, so I need to I need to catch back up to where I'm at here. Yeah, take your time. Take your time with the name, Janny. With your cockatoo name. I mean, I don't know how you're going to beat the name Mai Tai for the macaw, but... You know, you got it. You got an opportunity here. Nigel. Oh, based on the cockatoo from Rio. I love it. Nigel. Nigel the cockatoo. You know what I think when I hear Nigel? I, th I think Nigel Thornberry. You remember Nigel Thornberry? With the giant nose. And he like, how did he talk? He was like, he had a British accent. Nigel Thornberry. Was it like that, maybe? And his nose was like, all up like that. Good old Nigel Thornberry. All right, I think it was one invisible de. Yeah, okay, so. Single crochet one, invisible decrease one, single crochet one. And that's the end. And then we do an invisible decrease, and then we attach the next leg. Okay, so we'll do invisible decrease, one, single crochet one, and then we attach the back leg. Cool. All right, so we've got Nigel the cockatoo. 
and Mai Tai the Macaw. What a wonderful, good job. And thank you so much, Cooper. Cooper is writing down the names now so I can keep track of them. I'm gonna start a Google Doc, or we have a Google Drive already, but we're gonna start one, or Google, yeah, whatever. We got a Google Sheet for these. But I'm gonna start one, I wanna make one on the website so like if you want to donate, you can choose which thing comes out for the donation or something. I don't know, I just thought that'd be kind of, that might be kind of fun. And then one there. And you know what, we'll crochet around that, this last bit too. Two, and that's the new end of the round. So this was actually my uh, contribution to the pattern was that I change at the end here, like the end of the round, we alter it so that the end of the round's over here now, instead of like on a round over here. And it just makes like the whole pattern way easier to read and stuff. But yeah, stuffing this guy up a little bit. We are on to round 28. So if you're crocheting with me, I am on round 28. I'm gonna take just a sec. Do I keep freezing? Ooh, good question. Okay, no, apparently. Janie says that I haven't kept freezing. Hmm. Oh no, wait, Alice says that I am, am freezing. Am I freezing to anybody else? I feel pretty warm to me, but. Wah, wah, wah. It says I have good connection though. Hi, Lix. How are you? I love that name. That's a good goblin name. I'm going to write that down. I've been trying to keep track of a bunch of names for goblins for the campaign on Friday. Just in case, like if they're like, oh, what's this guy's name? I could be like, oh, shoot. Uh, I don't know. Lix is a perfect name for goblin. I love it. Ooh, okay. Uh, Emily. Oh, Jimbo, sneeze. Yeah, you're okay, buddy. He got he sneezed all over himself because he's too cute. How you doing, bud? You gonna take a go back to sleep? Okay. Yeah, you're okay. Got a booger in your whisker. Um. All right. So yeah, guinea pig. Check this out, Emily. I think Emily asked me about the guinea pig. I actually have made a guinea pig. I don't have a pattern for this, but I have made one. Look at how cool this guinea pig is. I'm gonna give him, give him a little leg. But I should work on this pattern. It's just like crazy, you know? Like, there's just a lot going on in this pattern. Like, look at all the color changes alone. Like, what a wild, what a wild little guinea pig. But he's so cute though. Boop. Speaking of cute, you wanna say hi to Jimbo real quick? He's, he's awake, so I can pick him up. Wanna say hello? Come here. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Okay. This is Jiminy, if you never met him. Yeah. You don't want to be held? You always want to be held. Yeah. What? Now he just wants to hang out. He's gonna start eating our yarn. Let's go ahead and just move that out of the way before he starts doing that. How you doing, bud? Yeah? Yeah, okay. Let's keep crocheting then. All right, so we are on round, where was I? Where was I? 28, I'm on round 28, okay. We're coming to the end, actually. One, two, three. Oops, Jimbo's talking to us. And then our invisible decrease. He's also sniffling a lot. He's got a booger. Nasty. What a nasty booger boy. But now he's sitting in the sunlight. Oh, he found a little sunbeam. I love it when they fall asleep in sunbeams. It's so cute. You have, no you don't. You're lying, Emily. Are you serious? Emily says that they have 32 guinea pigs. That's crazy. 
By the way, my brother's in the chat. Hi, Taylor. Taylor is my brother. How you doing, bud? Hope you're having a good day. He's chilling. Taylor, have you thought about what to get mom for Mother's Day? Have you thought about that at all? Because we've been talking about it in this live stream. I'm not sure what to do. I'm thinking about crocheting her a tulip in the live stream next week. But we were planning on doing a live crochet along for the taper, I think. So might need to switch that up. I don't know. But do you have any ideas for what to give mom for Mother's Day? That's a wild amount of guinea pigs, by the way. Mai Tai is the name of the macaw that was in the picture when our family went to Hawaii. That's cool. What a great name for a... What a great name for a, a macaw. Mai Tai the macaw. Um, oh, cool. You went to Chili Cook-Off. My brother just went... I used to go to Chili Cook-Offs all the time. I miss I miss chili. I miss chili. Chili cookoffs are fun. I never had a guinea pig. Actually, Taylor had guinea pigs, right? Or was it hamsters? What did you have, Taylor? I don't remember if they were guinea pigs or hamsters. I remember. I think that Taylor's hamster or guinea pig, like, surrounded itself in a ball of of like stuff and then like suffocated in there or something i don't know kind of creepy i know but i think that's what happened i don't remember totally taylor do you remember your hamster i remember it, it's it was stinky i remember it was a stinky hamster um okay wait i need to invisible decrease into each stitch hamsters yeah there were multiple hamsters Man, I barely remember that. I definitely remember you had a hamster, though. Do you remember what its name was? Taz. Yes, that's what happened. <laughs> it was sad. <laughs> okay, so we got a new user that has a crazy name. Now, I'm just, just straight. I'm not going to say it. Oh, one got out when you were asleep. I don't remember that. Did the cat get it? What happened to that one that got out when you were asleep, Taylor? Taz and Tinkerbell. Yes, I do remember Tinkerbell. Taz is also a good name for a goblin. Okay, last stitch in this round. And this is going to be the end of the body. We can continue on to the tail now. Um, but before I go, let's stuff it just a little bit more. So here, Emily, here's a good uh, show of it having too little stuffing. So right now, it does not have enough stuffing. And I can tell because, see it? I push it, and it holds that shape. And we don't want that. We want it to cushion back. Up here, it does have enough stuffing. Look, I, I push it. It'll come back a little bit. But we need to add more than that. I should have really added more stuffing before this round. Just because it's hard to get stuffing in when it's this small of a hole. But we can get it in there. I'm going to use this stick instead. Actually, you know what? Let's try our... Oh, yeah. Our crochet hook works. So I like using this like a crochet hook with a with a rubber back. Or, or a pencil with an eraser works really well, too, for stuffing. Because it just like grips onto the stuffing as you push it in. It just makes your life a little easier. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm loving all these stories about hamsters. Wow, wow, that happened to many people's hamsters, Jasmine. That's funny. Jasmine said that their hamster ate their, they ate each other <laughs> or something. That's wild. Whoa, Zoe had hamsters that just went wild. A free range guinea pigs in their yard? That's crazy. Guinea pigs are nuts. 
All right, see you later, Mimi. Thanks for joining. We'll see you next week. Same time, same place. All right, so we are on round. If you're crocheting along with me, I just got to the tail. And the tail also does a weird thing. She does slip stitches in each stitch for this tail to make it like really stick out further, I think. It was, it's a unique, I haven't done this before. I think it makes it look more like it's sewn on. Oops. Four. Five. And one more. Six. All right. Just like that. Front loops only, single crochets all the way around. And then after we finish this, uh, our ferret up, I'm gonna make a little harness for a goblin to ride it because I'm Louie and I get to do what I want. <laughs> and I like goblins. That's a, that, you'd, you'd think that a young Louie, like me when I was like eight years old, was also really into goblins. I mean, he did like goblins, but he didn't like them as much as old Louie likes goblins. Now I'm like, I like goblins a lot. My favorite thing is to crochet goblins. That's how nerdy. I'm just such a dweeb. But you know, I can't deny what I love. I like, I like it. Eight. One, one more. And it's this round is kind of hard because you got to just work into the front loops only. But all done. There's that. These little tails coming together. Cooper donated another twenty. Thank you so much, Cooper. Moderates and donates. What a homie. What a what a homie. Cooper. Let's see. Let's see. What do we got for you? What do we got for you? All right, see you later, Taylor. Thanks for joining. Let's put out, um, I mean, let's put out another burb, right? Yeah, Jimbo agrees. Yeah. Yeah. Let's put out a flamingo for Mr. Cooper. Thank you, Cooper. Another, fl another flamingo. Look at that. Look at that mouth. Look at that schnoz of his. And of course, boop, it's a burb because I love burbs. Hey, hey. Stop it. Jimbo's eating our yarn. He's gonna get kicked out. Look at he's like a he's got yarn all over him. Stop. Okay. Do you wanna say bye? Say bye. Say something. Nothing? Okay. Jimbo's gonna go by now because he's playing with our yarn and that's that's a no go. Are you gonna bite me? What are you doing? Okay, okay, sniffly boy. I love you, I'll be done soon. Be free. All right, we're free, we're free of the Jimbo. Just for a little bit. Wait, wait, wait. All right. There's a low amount of Jimbo saliva on this now. Just a just a little bit. Just a just a touch of Jimbo saliva. Two. It's just the best boy. Three. Four. Oh yeah, Cooper, what do you want to name your flamingo? We didn't. A I didn't ask that. What would you like to name your flamingo? Boom. Pretty great. Pretty good. We got the little tail coming together.
All right. We are on round 33. Okay, cool. So three rounds of just single crochets. That's nice and easy. That's an easy one, I'll tell you right now. That's a nice easy couple of three rounds. We're almost done with the pal. What is this accent? It's like a, it's like a broken Irish accent. It's like a, it's just like bad. It's just like bad. <laughs> Zoe, you're making a humanity for pride. I love that. I'm working on the pattern for next month's, uh, for next month's kit. Um, I got to start working on that this week. Uh, but we're doing, we're gonna do a big pride month. Um. And we're gonna do a unicorn for the kit next month. So if you haven't, by the way, if you haven't signed up for the pro memberships yet, sign up right now uh, to get a kit this month. You get to choose between our five um, endangered creatures kits. So it's a pretty cool kit this month where you get to choose one of five different kits. So if you haven't signed up for that yet, literally you have until the end of the day. So you are running out of, you're running out of time. So sign up now. Or as soon as you can. If you like to get this kit, if you like to get this kit. Okay. Boom. Any more there? I think that's the end of that round. One, two. Oh, no, no, no. We're not done. We're not. Oh, no, 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 no. We're not done. I'm not done with you yet, Mr. Ferret. I still got to crochet another round of your tail, Mr. Noodle. By the way, in the beginning, uh, I don't know if you, everyone here, was here in the beginning but kelly decided to name our ferret noodle and i think we all kind of agree yeah that's a pretty good idea so its name is noodle where's our black yarn there it is change it to this one pull that through that tighter and then crochet with this great also that just great let it fall we don't need that yarn anymore we're gonna need our brown yarn for making our harness after this but it's basically we were basically done Oh, you didn't name it Noodle. Someone else named it Noodle. Who named it Noodle? Which one of you... Which one of you named it Noodle? Oh, yeah. You named that odd goblin Daryl. Uh-uh. My name's Daryl. I think you talk like that, right? Kind of like Morty from Rick and Morty mixed with like a... Like a n nerdy... Nerdy New Yorker. Okay, last round? Yes, sir. Huh? Do? And invisible beakers. The other day I was trying to count in order, but switching the language for each number that I was counting. So I was doing like, un, two, tres, yon, I mean, I only really know those languages for counting. I don't, I don't know how to count in any other language yet. Yet. It's important. Eventually, I'll learn. But it was so difficult to change languages for each number. I was like, um, eight is, uh, <laughs> it's difficult. Okay, so we don't need to cut it. Or we don't need to slip stitch. We just cut our yarn, pull it through, and then sew it closed. We actually don't, I don't think we really need to stuff the tail even. So that's kind of cool. Just sew it closed. And then we'll we'll ad lib a harness. 
which we've done before. We made a harness for a dragon once. I've made a harness for an orc. So I, I'm pretty confident in how we're going to do this. I got an idea. We're going to improvise it. But Noodle is completed. In and out. There we go. Cut it nice and close. There we go. Stuff that little thread back in there, actually. Ba -ba -da -ba. Our noodle is done. Oh, he's so cute. Look at our little doodle. Look at, we should just like, turn his head a little bit. There we go. Now look at our noodle. Oh my gosh, he's so cute. It's just a little goober. Oh my God. Okay, let's give him a harness. Let's figure this out. We're gonna need brown yarn. We won't need very much, so I'm just gonna use this much right here. And uh, we'll start by, we'll, we'll start by making a little like round piece here. I think. So I think I'm just gonna do an oval, basically. An oval, ovular shape. So I think we'll just start with six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One more. Two, three, four, five, six. Pull it tighter. And then I think we'll do three. I'm gonna do an oval shape. So I'm gonna do three in three single crochets in the first stitch. One, two, and three, and then two in the next. This is how you do an oval if you wanted to learn. And then one into the next stitch. And then I repeat that one more time. So we do three and one, two and one, and then one and one. So it's a good it's a good system for make, starting an oval rather than just like a circle. I think um that the the dugong I think might start like this. So kinda like that. We want it one more big one bigger though. One, and then I do single crochet one and then three increases in a row. So if you want to make this harness, that's how you're doing it. So one single crochet and then three increases. And remember it increases two single crochets into one stitch. So one single crochet, three increases, and then I think three single crochets, one, two, yeah, three single crochets, and then three more increases, one, two there's your second increase one two and a third increase one two Ooh, emily how do you crochet the magic ring so quickly it takes me like 10 minutes and multiple attempts check out our tutorial uh you can find it at clubcrochet.com slash magic ring um or magic loop uh actually magic loop i think there's also a video tutorial in our youtube channel and uh, it teaches you a few different ways to magic to make the magic ring that makes it uh, really easy. So it's a really nice, easy uh, tutorial for how to do a few different uh, magic rings. But yes, I have been crocheting for a long time, so I, I know how to make them real quick. So that's a good oval, right? So it'll be like this. And then we're going to make little straps that go around the arms. But before I do that, I want to make like a little border on this so that the goblin can sit in it and not have to worry about falling out. But we also need a goblin. So let me grab a goblin. I got a whole bunch of them. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Let's use Shank. This is my favorite goblin. His name is Shank the Goblin. He's a goblin assassin. I made a little outfit for him. He can even he can even take off his little hoodie there. So we'll use him as our example of our goblin to make sure that he can sit in his little harness. I think the harness needs to be even bigger then, actually, to, to accommodate for Shank's big old booty. So let's do another round of increases here. We'll just increasing it. I'll just increasing it a little bit though. I'm not gonna do it too much. So we'll just do two increases. 
around. One, two, I think I actually, yeah, we'll do two and then an increase. Yeah, that looks good. So I'm making it the oval more square, but that's okay. I kind of like that actually. Just help our, help our little shank sit in his little seat. And then we'll do like a big bump in the back and another bump in the front so that he can sit down without without it coming apart. Yes, I'm just supersonic speed. Absolutely. Yeah. I'm I'm I go I travel at the speed of light. Can anybody remember the Sonic game Sonic Adventure 2? The song that goes traveling we travel around at the speed of sound. Got nowhere to go da, 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 the wind through. That song is is been jammed in my head ever since I was a middle school kid. Um, all right. <laughs> that looks pretty good. A little bit bigger of a harness, that's good. And then so what we'll do is I'm just gonna do actually I'll do like two more single crochets here to get it more lined up. One, two. And then I'm going to work into the, oh, I got two options here. Yeah, let's just work into the front. I'm going to work into the front loops only. And we're going to do slip stitches on the sides, like a couple of slip stitches. And then when I get to more of the side right here, I'll start doing like a single crochet and then a half double crochet that and then another half double yeah let's do one more half double actually and then a single half and then I'll do slip stitches in the front like this so I'm kind of thinking like if we do Oh, you know what? Let's do a little handle in the front, too, so he has something to, like, hold on to. Like that. We'll do a little handle here. Three, like a... I'm just doing a peacock stitch here in the front. It's kind of like a um, like a bull, like a bull rider's thing. So we just have a little bitty handle there so he has something to hold on to. And then we'll do more slip stitches. You know, you gotta think about everything when it comes to this. You gotta make sure they got handles and stuff like that. Let's see how this is looking so far though. Yeah. Alright. Oh yes, the chow gardens. God, I love the chow gardens. You're all saying, oh good night, guys. Good night, Emily. Thanks for joining. Hey Tassilarian. Welcome. And then we'll do a single here. And then half double crochets in the middle here. And we'll, we'll do we'll do it a little bit bigger on the back as well, I think. One, two. We'll do three half doubles. Okay, so it's coming together like that. See how it like goes up like that? So that our goblin can like the idea is going to be so like the goblin can like actually sit in it and not actually fall out. I mean, obviously that's going to be kind of hard to accomplish realistically, like without pinning him on, but it'll look at least like he can sit in it. Three, we'll do single crochet there. And then now we're on our back part. So let's do, let's do one slip stitch. And then right in the back here, I think we need a like a backrest, you know? So I think what I'm going to do is... I think we'll do single crochets in the front loops. One. Two. We'll do three single crochets. 
Actually, yeah, we'll do, th and then I'm gonna do a single crochet into the, both loops of this first slip stitch that we did, like that. And then I'll do a slip stitch into it. And then I'm gonna turn around and chain one. Actually, yeah, turn and chain one like that. And then I'll do a half double, let's see. Yeah, we'll do half double crochets in each of the single crochets that we did. One, two, three, like that maybe. See how this looks. See, so the idea is gonna be a little backrest like that. And then we'll do a slip stitch to finish it up. And then we gotta do the arm holders too. But this isn't going bad. Right? So that way it's got like a little backrest. It's got its little sides. We're gonna put, we're gonna pick up stitches in the back loops here and then we're gonna make a little strap that goes around the arms so that it holds on. And then we can have our little goblin sitting in it like this. <laughs> oh, this is gonna be too funny. Maybe we can make, how would we make why it would, we would need like a mouth guard. I don't want to do that on our, I don't want to do that to noodle. So we're not going to do that. All right. So we did our slip stitch. Let's cut it and hide this end in. That was really short. I shouldn't have cut it so short, but that's okay. Okay, Janny. Thanks for joining. Good luck with your friend. Hope she's okay. Thank you so much for your tips as well. I really, really, really appreciate it. <laughs> All right. So we're going to go around here. there hide the end i'm just gonna hide the end somewhere on the inside i know i'm going really quick i'm sorry if you're trying to crochet this with me i'm i'm sorry but yeah you can see what you can see what kind of what the idea is there and then i'm just gonna hide this actually i was gonna try to get it to the other end and then double knot it together but it's so far away from where the other tail end is that I don't even care. I don't even care. Who cares? Not me. Uh-uh. That. We'll cut that end in, and then we'll cut this end also. And the last thing we need to make is the little straps to go around the arms. So, I have a brown yarn here. And this part should be pretty easy, I think. So we're gonna pick up a stitch. Let's see, when this is on there, where would we want to pick up a stitch? Right like here. Like right there. So we're gonna go right like this. I made a slip knot. Pull that through. This song is so creepy. And then we'll just actually I'm just gonna switch this because I don't like this music. No, no. Let's go. Let's go to this one. Yeah, that's fun. I like that. Ooh, a bonhomie! Yes, good idea, Susan. Susan's got the ideas. Susan's bringing the ideas. I've got yarn in between my toes. Oh no! All right. So this is gonna go like this. So I just need to make enough change so that it goes around this leg. I don't think, I was gonna do like single crochets back around it, but I don't think we need that. I think we can just handle just chain stitches and then it'll sit on the back, go around the arm. And I think we need a few more, but then I'll just connect it back up here and then hide the ends in. And then we'll do it to the other side too. That way we can take it on and off. It doesn't have to be like permanently attached to noodle. Three, let's try that. Let's see how this goes. Goes around like, like this. Let's 
Yeah. Okay, how many chains is that? We gotta remember for the other side. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen chains. That's what we wanna do. And then I'll slip stitch back to the next stitch right here. Like that. We could do ones for the back legs also, but I don't think we really need that. I think just the front legs will be fine. We might need, actually, we might need one long one that goes around the tail to keep it like, so it doesn't like go forward like that. So we might need to do that. We'll, we'll see how that works. And then I'm just gonna hide this end in to a few stitches. That. And then I think I'm just gonna double knot both of these ones and then rehide these ends a little bit better. One and two. Hopefully 13 was enough. Let's make sure before I do too much more here. Around that arm. Oh yeah, that'll be that'll be just fine. Yeah, that looks good. Okay. Do I have a written tutorial for the harness? No, I'm making it up on the spot, but I, I can try writing it down. Maybe Cooper. Yeah, Cooper is. Yeah, thank you, Cooper. Cooper said he's going to freehand it and then put it in the Discord channel later. That's great. That would be great, Cooper. Or, I mean, write it down for us and then put it in. The... Yeah. But I am just freehanding it. Sometimes it's fun just to let loose and just see what happens with your crochet. Sometimes it works out, sometimes it doesn't. Okay. One arm bit on there. We'll put it on right here and then we'll see how the other one goes. Go like that round and then the other one's going to go right here so we can pull through it looks like let's start it right here let's start right there and then we'll just do another one and we might need to do one for the back but i don't know we'll see how we'll see if this one holds on tight um i might even be able to do a little magnet on the bottom so that our bonimals can hold on to it actually that we're definitely going to do that um so right there is good we'll chain 13 that's what we did in the last one two three five six seven ten twelve thirteen slip stitch back into stitch next to it right here like that Make sure that fits him right before I cut it and everything. Or get that yarn out of the way. There we go. Like that. Hey, you know what? That fits really well. It's a little loose, but I kind of like that it's a little loose so that it's easier to take on and off. And I don't think we need a back thing either, actually. It's like totally on there <laughs> this is so cool god i love crochet it's the best guys crochet is the best everybody i don't know if you knew this but crochet is the best all right cut the yarn pull it off the other arm there and uh let's sew this bit on like just hide the ends and stuff and then we'll double knot it and, and then we We'll figure out a magnet part too. I, I have an idea on how to attach a magnet to it. But hold on, let's one step at a time. Hide that end in, double knot these two, and then hide the ends. And then I think I'm, I think I could just sew on a magnet or two. Or actually, we can just put a magnet on the top. I, you know what? Even easier. Yeah, that way we don't need to have a permanent magnet on there. Okay. Okay. We're thinking. We're thinking with 
We're thinking with portals now. This, just hiding the end in a little bit. One. Hide this end in. It totally looks like something out of Star Wars. See you, see you later, Syndra. Syndray? Syndray. He needs a little Bob, Boba Fett. Actually, I think I might have a little Boba Fett somewhere. That might be good. That might be a good idea. Okay. So what, let, let, we'll start with a goblin. Okay, let's put the harness on. Okay. So he's got his harness. Oh my god, you guys, look at that! Oh my god, that's so cute! Okay, and then, then here's what the goblin looks like in the harness. Pretty adorable. Oops. Not gonna lie, pretty cute. But, way better. Way better idea. Whoever said to do this was a genius. I think what we'll do is, first off, we need a bonimal. So let's go into the monomal. See, which bonimal do we want? You just do this blue one, that's because then it's like kind of cute. Got the unicorn. I think I want something with color. Which is why I was thinking the blue. The bunny's not bad. Purple bunny. Oh, there's a piglet. Let's do the pig. Pig's silly. Well, pig or the bunny? What do you guys think? Pig or the bunny? You let me know. We can do both. Either or both. And then all we have to do is find the polarity. Oh, actually, I don't know if... Well, we'll just have to move. We'll just have to move that in there. Just need to move that magnet a little bit. There we go. Just like that. I only need one. And then the other one can go on the bottom. Like that. And then we don't even need to really attach anything to it. It'll hold in. Like that. And we can even pull it off. Wait. Wait. We should do two magnets on the bottom, actually. Pig. Everyone's saying pig. Okay, fine. Pig works. Okay, so bottom right there. Piglet goes on oh my goodness guys we're geniuses oh my gosh so now uh there we go we have our pig our little piglet riding our ferret with his little harness let's move this back a little bit so that it goes like that oh my gosh that's too cute guys this is so cute wow okay 10 out of 10 wood crochet again we didn't even need to do that back thing for the for the back. Cause I did that once on a on a um I did it I did it once for a for a dragon and I had to use the back stitch there. Um Zoe, what kind of magnets do I use? Um the magnets I use, these are size uh twelve millimeter in diameter and two millimeter in depth. They're called Neodiminium. Um, I believe it's spelled N-Y for Neo. N-Y, Neo, N-Y-O-D-I-A something. So Neodiminium, they're super strong magnets. And those are the size, 12 millimeter by two millimeter. Oh, that's a great idea, yeah, like this. He's like, hey, hey, get off my ride. And then the pig's like, See you later, sucker. <laughs> so nerdy, dude. Love it. Look at that little piglet riding the... Oh my god. That's too cute. I love it. Absolutely adorable. I agree. 
Um, can we please write out the pattern for the monomal? Yes, we're working on that. Monomal pattern's coming out soon. Actually, Cooper's already helped with that a lot. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm working on a tutorial for the, for the monomal coming out soon. Um, but that will be the live stream. Guys, thank you so much for joining. Thank you for, thank you for crocheting along with me. If you haven't donated yet, please consider donating to the World Wildlife Fund. Um, you can er donate to download all of our Earth Day patterns. Again, we have our little ferret here. Um, this is Noodle, our ferret. Uh, we've got our taper. That's This is what we're going to be making next week, our Malayan taper. This is a taper from um, Ohana Crafts. So this pattern's coming out on Friday. If you haven't subscribed yet, subscribe down below. The video tutorial will be out Friday, and we'll be doing a live crochet along for it next Sunday. Um, we've got our... I feel like I have... Ah, uh, yes. Okay. So we've got our dugong from Mr. Uh, Drooby Zoo. We've got our pangolin from Sir Pearl Grey, who was here a little earlier, which is going to be our week after our taper there. And then our final one is from me, my design for, there it is, for our snowy plover burb. So it's a new burb with new little feet. And of course, it's a burp with that. So those are our three patterns. You can find them all at clubcrochet.com slash earth day. Let's have the let's have the plover sit on it. <laughs> it's too silly. I love it. I love it. Oh, I hope I hope Andrea likes this. I'm gonna send her a picture after this. So cute. Get our pig back on that. Um, and yeah, so make sure to like and subscribe, donate at clubcrochet.com slash earth day, and I'll see you guys next Sunday at 1 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, where we'll be making a taper, um, and we'll do something, I'm sure we'll do something fun with the taper too, uh, I'll just have to think about it. Maybe we'll do another harness thing like this, and we'll have a little, a little, uh, like a, what's it called? When they like, charge each other, and then like, you have like a little lance. What's that called? It's called lancing? No, it's called, it's called, uh, what's that called? God, I can't think of what that's called. Whatever, you know what I'm talking about. Anyhow, <clears throat> no, no, no. See, I'm, I'm killing time right now so that you hang up first. I think actually it's probably best Maybe, actually, if, like, maybe you could hang up first this time. Oh, uh, that's cute. You hang up. A joust. Thank you, cat. That's what it is. It's a joust. Anyhow, you hang up first. Okay, bye. You hang up. No. No. Mm-mm. Abby, you hang up first. Cheryl. No, you hang up first. No, you hang up first. Uh-uh, you. No, you. Kelly, you're messing with me. Don't make me hang up first again. You make me do this every time and it's not fair. <laughs> All right, dudes. See you next Sunday. Bye. Bye.